What up? This is Dregs One. Welcome to another episode of the History of the Bay podcast, sponsored by the good folks of Amoeba Music, San Francisco. We got D.O. on the boards, King Set, and D'Angelo behind the camera. Shout out to the producers, Skino and Whitney Chanel. Yes. And today, many clouds of smoke, the Frisco legends, the Frisco pioneers, both of them in the building. Finally. Total <laughs> devastation. Finally. What's happening? Oh, man, it's all good, brother. What up, fam? Good, good to be, be here, here yeah, man. Yeah, good yeah, to be sure, here, sure, Come on, man. Sure, good sure. to be here. Appreciate y'all making time, man. Thank you, man. Come on. We, we've, we've been, been trying to do this yeah, for a minute, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Come on, exactly, man. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yes. And on the History of the Bay podcast, we all about showing love to the pioneers. Yes, and, sir. And, and, and keeping the names and the histories going. So let's just get right into it right at the very beginning, man. Why don't you tell us what it was like growing up in San Francisco's Mission District? You you want to start because you you grew up. I'm I'm more like a implant because I I guess uh, I guess I'll start. I came from the Bayview originally, and then I came over into the Mission District around maybe 81, 82, like fifth, sixth grade, and I I initially came like hanging out at the boys' club, you know, because I I went to Patrol Hill Middle School and Daniel Webster Elementary, so some of the guys from the back streets went to Patrol Patrol Hill, so. I start going to the boys club and that's oh, how you, you got to ex- explain what is the back streets for those who don't know. The back streets, any, anywhere from like Petrell, what all the way with like Harrison, Folsom, South Van Ness, <laughs> I guess, all, all like from, uh, I guess, 20, 20th Street all the way to 24th, 25th Street, 26th. You know, all the back streets, all the way back, to, you know, to General Hospital, all the way back, I guess, from Mission, all the way back. You know, mm-hmm. all that's the back streets. And that's where we come from. That's all the Backstreet area. So you, city. you you moved over there from Bayview when you were in uh, elementary school. Elementary school, uh, middle school, and my my childhood best friend Eltro, God rest his soul. He lived in um, he lived on Van Ness Street, South Van Ness. So I was always at his house. That was like my second home, you know. So my parents knew where I was at. If I wasn't home, they knew I was over there at Eltro House. So I was always on Twenty Second and South Van Ness. So that was like. My home when I was when I was in the mission. Well, what about you, Brian? Um, I grew up in the city, Mission District. So that's my roots. I was born in St. Luke's, right down the block. We on Army Street, or they call it Cesar Chavez now. But when I was a kid, it was Army Street. Um, I grew up all from here, all the way down to 20th Street, 20th and Treat, Harrison, Shotwell, Cap. <laughs> all, like he said, all the oh, back yeah, streets, yeah, yeah, all the back streets up to Alabama. Um, the boys club was right there on 21st in Alabama. So we always. Uh, that was kind of like the hub. Yeah, we always ended up filtering over there. We was playing sports together. All yeah. the kids wanted to play sports. We all wanted to play basketball, baseball, um, soccer. I played soccer at St. Peter's. We all played sports, a lot of sports um, yeah, as the youngsters in the mission. Yeah, and for the, I mean, now when you talk about the mission district, it's known worldwide. People know it. People come to visit for the murals and the bars and the restaurants. Because of the culture, because of Carlos Santana. Yeah, so talk about that culture. What was it like growing up in that culture? And what was it like when y'all were kids? Like I said, especially right here, where, where we're at right now. Right now, we're on uh, like Cesar Chavez and uh, the freeway, right on the other side of the freeway. But uh, like, like I was saying earlier, when I was young, my mama told me not to go past General <laughs> Hospital. So I was not allowed to go past Petrero. So I could only go that far that way. And then I would go up to Mission Street, uh, Valencia, Guerrero, all the way up to, uh, the, what's the park right there for Mission? Ralph, did you go to Ralph Park? Did you go there? La Rasa. La, La Rasa, the one across the street from Mission um, High School. Oh, Dolores. Dolores, Dolores Park. That Dolores one. Park. Thank you. I can't remember shit no more. Mission but, Dolores. Yeah, that one. So I'll go up to, to that far and just, just run around, you know, look for shit to play, look for shit to, look for shit to get into. Um, I didn't really start getting into the music until I got back from, uh, I got sent away when I was like 10 years old. I got sent away to a boy's home until I was 15. So for five years, I was gone out the city. But when I did get back to the city, I was really, really, really into music. I had already been in a band. Um, we did all kinds of music. I did rock music, rap music. Um, when I first met Tone is when I realized that, we, that I wanted to have a group because as a rapper, Especially at the time, there was not many, if any, 
Latin rappers. But well, see, that, that's what I want to talk about. Not what, many, what, if what, any. What was like that culture of the mission? Because that's known as like the Latin hood in Frisco. I mean, we are. We're, we're very Latin hood, but it wasn't always hip hop. It was, you know, uh, uh, Latin music, Spanish music. Um, 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 I mean, funk, parliament. I mean, I, my parents listened to a lot of, my mom listened to a lot of Santana. My mom listens to a lot of Smokey Robinson. And for those my, who don't know, that Carlos Santana is from the mission. Right yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Carlos, my, my, my mom knew Santana and the families, and Sapo, um, my auntie, uh, my auntie Dorothy. Um, and, and, you know, the, the mission district is, is very interesting because it's, it's a predominantly Latin neighborhood. But, you know, you have projects right smack dab in the middle. You had Army Street. You had Valencia Gardens down the way. You had... Kind of, um, what, Alamany? We're, we're right between so, Fillmore you know, and Hurst Point. You know so what I mean? So. so for me, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm Afro-Latino, you know, black and Afro-Latino. And it was just like a melting pot to me, you know, it was just because it was a little bit of everything going on. You know, every, it was it was never no separation. Everybody kind of messed with everybody. The black kids, Latin kids, you know, the Samoan kids, the Philippines, everybody messed with each other because we all went to school together school together, you know, so we all mess with each other, so. Yeah, that's that's that kind of diversity that you only get in, yeah, you in, know, in Frisco, really. And, and we are older generation, so our generation was the same way. We was growing up the same way, you know, with, with a bunch of diversity, so, yeah. you know. And everybody lives so close together, so, you know, we, we had to mess with each other. And you talked about being sent away. Were you getting in some trouble early on? Was was the streets kind of hectic for y'all? It was it was a little of, of me going through some trouble at school. And and in the, in the streets, and also my mom, both of my parents, my my dad wasn't around, and my mom was having um, her own personal issues. So, yeah, me and my brother, we got sent away when we were young. Like I said, I was like ten; he was like eight. We got sent up north to uh, Sonoma uh -huh. County, Hannah Boy Center. Hannah Boy Center. What yep. year was that? That was nineteen eighty. Uh, 1980. And so, yeah. when you got back, did did you notice a change? Had crack come out when you got back? And Things you know what? Got... Crack came out right after I got back in 85 because yeah. when I was in high school, I remember that that record came out. Uh, 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 Hovis? Hovis. Oh, that Hovis. Forte one? Yeah, yeah, Hovis. That Hovis. Hovis. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so yeah, I, I was going to Galileo at the time. Uh -huh. I was going to Galileo High School and, and there was a few rappers that were out. And like I said, they was playing at the time, on at the time yeah. there was no Latin rappers and I wanted to rap. I'm like, man, I want to rap. You know what I mean? I want to, I want to do that too. When you say Latin rappers, you, you're not just talking to Bay. You're talking overall, right? Talking like, anywhere, bro. Anywhere. I'm talking period. This I is mean, before Kid Frost and before all that. Kid yeah, Frost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before, before Kid, Kid Frost. Frost and I mean, Mellow there might have been before Mellow, Mellow Man Ace. There, there might have been them cats from uh, 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 New York, the uh, Puerto Ricans from New York. Like the cast, like the first, uh, I guess, introduction we seen was the cast that was on with the movie Wild Style. And then B Street, you know, right. the guys that were like kind of like B boys, but what was in, what was the Power Rules group? Power Rule, and and that was that was Power Rule. That Power was Rule. Okay, group. okay, and then like the Beat Nuts. Yeah, those are the first Latin Latin uh, 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 rappers, artists, hip hop artists that I really saw. You know, and Cypress Hill, there, and Cypress Hill it. too. You know, we gotta give it to Cypress Hill because right, right, they was right. on some hip hop stuff too. Oh hell yeah, some hip hop shit. So yeah, we gotta give it to them that too. was like early. 90s. That was later though. That yeah. was later. That, that, that was later. Yeah, much later. But 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 in the beginning, really, there was. There was really no Latin MCs, really, because when I met him, it was just like I was kind of like intrigued, you know, that he was spitting the way he was spitting. But it was just like I wasn't really tripping like he was a a dope Latin MC. I was just like, he's a he's dope, dope MC. Yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah, know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. I wasn't even tripping off that. Because like I said, we just so diverse out there, out, you know, in the city, we weren't tripping like that. But it was just. He was spitting. He had bars. You know. So when when did you pick up the pen and start and start writing rhymes and and, and stuff like that? I was writing. I was I was writing poems and rhymes in when I was going to St. Peter's. So that was like fourth, fifth grade. Okay, so yeah, early. Yeah, early, 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 early. But not really like rap. I was more like like I said, writing poems and rhymes. Yeah, you know. But then obviously when Sugar Hill came out and said the hip hop, the hibbity hibbity man, come on. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I, that that's exactly what I started to. I was I was early into the hip hop with the Fat Boys, mm -hmm. Run DMC, um, um, Houdini. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, 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 I said uh, Doug Fresh Fresh and Slick Rick was a yeah. big big influence, and then and then LL Cool J. Yeah, you know what I mean? All that all that early early New York rap really influenced me 
which is why I don't really have like a San Francisco or Bay Area style. When we first came out, nobody really knew where we were from. Yes, yeah, so you know, because yeah, we, yeah, we were just, we were we influenced were by East Coast influence. Yeah, yeah. Hip hop. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah what sure. about you, Tom? When, when did you start getting into the rhymes? I, I think around the time when I think around Run DMC and Houdini came out, then movies like B Street, Breaking, Crush Groove, all that made me fall in love with, with hip hop. But I, I think what really made me fall in love with it was like guys like Rakim because it was like in 86, 87, it was a kind of a renaissance of change. You know, like uh, BDP came out, uh, Eric B and Rakim EPMD. came out, mm-hmm. EPMD, like mm-hmm. when those groups came out, mm-hmm. you just felt the change because the music was starting to shift and start to sound different. And we, I think we want to be a part of that. And even we got to give credit to Too Short because oh, yeah. what Too Short was doing, he was pioneering stuff out here and it was just a blueprint of what he was doing, you know, how he was making the records. But I think the summer of 87, when I heard Freaky Tales and I heard EPMD, You're a Customer, I think them two records really, really like, I want to make a record. Right. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, right. And that's before we we knew each other, but we <clears> wasn't really solidified as a group yet. But how did, those, how, how did y'all meet? We met through uh, a mutual friend. My, my cousin Eltro. His cousin Eltro was my childhood best friend. Mm. Yeah, R.I.P. Eltro. Was he Emo. was my childhood best friend Emo. and um and I'm good to go. I lived in Stockton at the time, and I used to come home on Christmas break, summer break, whatever. And um, me and him met with uh, New Year's Eve, uh, eighty six going to eighty seven mm-hmm. at Horseman Middle School. We was partying at Horseman Middle School, and Eltro introduced us. Eltro like, hey man, my cousin rap. And he used to beatbox. He was a beatbox at first. When I first met him, he wasn't even rapping yet. That's like I said. He didn't I, no raps for me I, yet. I, I he was, was just beatboxing, beatboxing at first because right, right. I, I, I didn't want to, I wasn't ready to, to rap. Yeah, yeah, and I, I wasn't start, ready yet. And I started busting raps and I was kind of like a closet MC at first because I was an athlete. I played football and ran track. But, you know, I was a closet MC. I was studying guys. And when I got back home, I used to feel comfortable around rapping around these guys. So I started spitting shit and he like, I like your voice. He said, you got an ill ass voice. That's the first thing he said about me. My raps was okay, but my voice was kind of distinctive. So after that, we just kind of like, we didn't even trip off being a group at first. I just knew I would see him down the line because that was Eltro's cousin. So we was connected. He was we didn't see each other for a long time either. After kinda that. Like a year later yeah, almost. We didn't see each other for a long time. Like a year right, later. Right, right. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. I, I went away to the military. Right. Okay. So I, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I had running. left to the military after that. Was that by was choice gone. or was that a... Uh... No, I didn't, get, I, didn't get forced, I didn't get forced to do nothing. Most of, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I went by choice. I wanted to see I wanted to see the world. I wanted to go, oh, you, you know... Oh, you that be all you can be. Yeah, 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 yeah. Type of I didn't, hey, I, like I... My, my whole life, all I've known is institutionalized. You know what I mean? Like, I went away as a, as a youngster, institutionalized. Being in fucking, excuse my language, we're like cuss, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. You like right. smoke weed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. This grown, up, this grown up shit, right? Okay. My bad, fellas. Um, so, yeah, so being institutionalized my whole life, that's what I'm used to. I mean, fucking military, fucking boys' homes, fucking jail, fucking prison, fucking, you know what I mean? It's yeah. Fucking. Um, yeah. This guy, nah. Get, that pro- get, get to run that program. It is what it is. Let me ask you this. This is an ill question right here. When did y'all first start smoking butt? <laughs> Shit, we like. Well, I didn't start Together? smoking. I was. I was <laughs> when we met Together each other, we were both separate. smoking weed. Hmm. Separate. I, I yeah. want the first, oh, the first time we met. Because you I rapped mean, about it. This is, this is in your yeah, song. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 The story's true. The story's the story's true. true. When I was a kid, um, yeah, my pops smoked weed and he left fucking doobies in the ashtray. And my mom and my pops also smoked PCP and they decided to leave fucking doobies in the ashtray. So most of the time, I found the weed ones. But every once in a while, I find that laced up Ooh. one boy. And at, at 11 and 12 years old, they ain't supposed to be smoking that wet, man, at yeah. all. Man, I went on fucking trips that, that, well, that's, when Star Wars came out, yeah. That's why he ended up in Hannah Boy Center. That's why I ended up in the boys' home. Because my ass this was my 11, so my ass was like 11 that. 12 my years old, out there smoking fucking wet ones, out there smoking killer joints like my fucking, my mom and dad did. And, uh, Man, I got in so much trouble one day. I went to school and smoked one of them, and, and then I had another kid. He hit it one time. And, oh, that wasn't a good fucking result. That was actually a good friend of mine by the name of um, uh, Alfonso. Um, Shout out to Alfonso. Put him on blast real quick. A real good friend of mine. <laughs> we'll um, talk about him later. Yeah, we'll talk about him. We'll talk a lot about him. He's a real good friend of ours. But, yeah, I, man, I got in so much trouble at school. St. Peter's, they fucking... 
they want to know where I got the that and the, what I smoked with him. And like I said, I remember, I remember, uh, I think me, him, and my brother went to see Star Wars when it first came out, and I was, I was. I was crawling through the aisles. <laughs> I was like on some real Friday shit. I was crawling through the aisles and fucking eating other people's popcorn, just going in there fucking. And my brother was trying to get. My brother was the only one that wasn't high. Me and my me and my partner, we was high. Fuck, my brother. I believe was, him too. I man. believe him. What, what what was what was your introduction, Tom? Me, I was I was I was more of a a late bloomer because, like I said, I was an athlete and. I don't know, it was like around my senior year of high school. Hold on one second, what the fuck is that? You close the door? Yeah. It was open, I left it. I didn't touch that, and I just walked in and out. I didn't uh, touch that. You're supposed to close the door, play. My bad, what my, the my, fuck, my bad, my bad. Hey, I went, hey, nobody told me I was charged. I'll be security if you need me. All right, there we go. All right. No more closed doors. No more locked doors. No more locked doors. No more locked doors. No more locked doors. I don't like locked doors. Right. This is funny. All right, this is all right, all right, all right. And... And we back. We back. All right. Well, um, when did you first start smoking weed, man? Like around my my senior year of high school. Like I said, I was a I was I was an athlete. Yeah, I was a late bloomer, and um, I guess Eltro. Fucking Eltro. Fucking Eltro. Fucking Ebo. We love you. He came up to Stockton one weekend. He like, man, I got some Indo sex, and I'm like, what the fuck is Indo? This is this one. We just had brown weed and. All that we didn't have we that didn't good have shit yet. Yeah. You know, we didn't have a good shit. He's like, I got some Indo sax. And this, I guess this is like 86, 87. And when he had the Indo, that shit changed my life. <laughs> and I never turned back. So around 17, my, my senior year of high school, I started smoking. Yeah, and that, that's interesting too, because nowadays, you know, cannabis is is pretty much legal. There's all different kinds of strains, but in the early days, I mean. Cass was really smoking Bammer, right? They was smoking uh, bullshit. Yeah. They think, were smoking Dolores Park, motherfucker. That's what we call that I shit. Think, I think the, the, smoking tie, that. the chocolate tie was probably the best, but that shit would give you the munchies like a mug. But you was getting they was the, getting Dolores Park weed in tin foil. Okay, that's what they was getting some bullshit before that green was, weed came. It, 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 it was hard. It was hard out there. <laughs> it yeah. was hard weed. on a pimp. Yeah, it was yeah. a brick weed. Hey, get it, your good weed at Golden Gate Cannabis too, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, around 86, 87, that's when like the, the indica came out, the skunk weed. I think, yeah, when the skunk weed came, oh, yeah, that, that's that changed right. my life. That's yeah. about right. So, yeah, I mean, because because also, too, nowadays it's nothing like you'll that's see true. rappers, whoever, blunt after blunt, smoking there. But back then it wasn't like, it wasn't like you was just rolling back to back and blowing every day. Like, that's kind of like, it was kind of different back then, right? No, it's it. Motherfuckers couldn't afford it. Yeah. yeah, we have to put our money together, you know. Like, like you said, we got five on it. I can relate to that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. have to do that. We used to, to have to put five on it. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. To make a twenty have it like that. You know? Yeah. So we mm-hmm. used to do the same thing. You mm-hmm. know? And that's that's and also oh, weed was way more expensive too back in the right, days. Right, 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 right. I was yeah. paying twelve hundred for a QP back in the days. Ooh. Yeah, and that's fucking. You get a pound of weed for that nowadays. Yeah, Price yeah. Is more it's different. just it's just interesting though, because like when I think of y'all being early. Um, Representatives of 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 weed in hip hop. That's also like some Frisco shit because we had the hippies out here. Yes, we had sir. The, the Humboldt County movement. It was Correct. already there. Was like you just said. It was already a movement when me and him first started rapping or make, doing our first song, which was called Total Devastation. That's how the name came out. That's how we ended up being named Total Devastation because we had a song called Total Devastation, and the yeah. tone said we should just be named Total Devastation. Yeah, oh, fuck it. it's a hard ass name. But yeah, but uh, the the song was called Total Devastation in the SF Streets. We ended up putting a single by that. So and we, wait, was, wait, we wait. was already talking about smoking weed, smoking weed and drinking beers and partying. Right, and partying right. Back, you know, part that's of what, what we I'm did. getting. It's like the lifestyle too. Yeah, it's not yeah. just that's that's different for back then yeah. because it wasn't like everybody was just blowing I like mean, that. We was we was smoking weed in our personal life. We was smoking weed even when we was doing live shows in the beginning. We was smoking weed on stage. But we wasn't really incorporated in our music just yet. Right. Talking about it on a level when we got to many clouds. But we was like about that life. But yeah, we just yeah, didn't put yeah. it in our music because right. we still haven't found ourselves as artists yet. So we was, you know, still trying to figure it out. But if we did like live shows and shit, we was just smoking weed on stage, you know. So getting back to that. Like what, it was nothing. <laughs> what, what made y'all form a group together? Um, Damn, what made us form a group together? <laughs> I mean... You know, um, actually, like I said, uh, when I heard F- Freaky Tales and I heard um, EPD, I mean EPMD, you're a customer. I mean, I just wanted to make a record, and he was kind of like the first person I thought about. But 
he didn't rap yet. We, when he came back from the army, we went to a, a house party together and he started busting rhymes. And I'm like, nigga, you know what I'm saying? Like, where all this come from? You know, he started busting rhymes and he like, man, when I was in the military, I was, you know, rapping with guys from Buffalo, New York, Virginia. And he said, you know, what, what was they calling you? Cali? Texas. Yeah. West Coast? Yeah, yeah. I was, they, I was West Coast or Cali. Or MC Cali. They was calling him MC <laughs> my, Cali my and shit. Partner, my partner was from Oakland. I had another homie from Oakland. But yeah, we used to rap with dudes from Texas, Virginia, like he said, New York, Buffalo. Just uh, obviously was in the military, so we was from all over the place. Mm -hmm. But um, I remember being out there and introducing them to Rodney Oak, to um, Everlasting, Everlasting Bass. Bass. Yeah. They had never heard that. They never knew, they they had never heard of Rodney on that West Coast, West Coast shit. And I, I started singing some of that everlasting bass and then I started busting my own shit. And then, and that's like I said, like I was, I was incorporating my, 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 I guess my, my own style. Right. Uh, and, and, uh, out there I was able to, to spit in the military. You know, and when I came back, I was ready. It's right, funny right. he says that. Cause I remember one day we <clears> was on a block and he was freestyling over everlasting bass. <laughs> And our older homies was like, man, what the hell y'all doing? Y'all just out here wasting y'all time. You remember it was like Danilo, Charles mm -hmm. Gauchi, and a couple mm -hmm. of them was like, y'all talented. Y'all wasting y'all time out here. Yeah, they told us and, we need to do something. Not, not like, as if we was wasting mm -hmm. time rapping, but we was wasting time by rapping, not doing something not the studio, with yeah, the yeah. rap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And they we wanted like, us to do something. Yeah. We, we ain't got a DJ. We, we need a DJ. And we like fooled around with a couple of guys, but we never really had a DJ. Like, but we used to go to... Uh, Jerry Ross house, DJ uh, Cutthroat. Jerry shout Ross. Shout out DJ Cutthroat. We used to go to his house uh, back in the day. Then um, Shout out DJ we, ADR. We would mess with ADR, uh, DJ uh, Dis. We would mess with them a little bit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And Cubert. Yeah, yeah. And Cubert. Cuber went to fuck. I went to the same high school as Cubert. That's but, what's up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I remember but, when him and uh, the their whole little clique was... Uh, uh, Doing parties and all that. Right, we right. was doing parties same time. Right. And uh, yeah, this is also the time when hip hop is really booming, like graffiti, man, DJ, everything, break everything. Dance, and yeah. right here in the Bay, like I said, yeah. because we had the baddest fucking DJs. We had uh, uh, Cuba, we had Disc, we had Mike, we had fucking, we had these niggas was winning fucking world championships, right. you know. And at the same time, you know, we had artists coming out of here just blooming. We had fucking uh, 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 out of Frisco, just out of Frisco when we was doing it. It was RBL. It was IMP. It was uh, it was us. It was uh, 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 totally insane. Well, well, uh, well before uh, that, well, before that, we, we got to give guys like ATC they, they, they props because they was shout one out of the ATC first guys. And Paris. And, and Paris. Paris. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My, that, that's my partner. Hey, the Black not, Panther. Let's rap. not get too far ahead of ourselves because actually <clears throat> Paris was the one that gave us the game to uh to make a record. You know what I'm saying? And not to get too far ahead of ourselves. Paris yeah. gave us game. I started doing actually um when we met and we wanted to form a group, I started uh taking classes at City College of San Francisco. And uh, me and David Paul, David Paul already had a, a radio show called Beatbox Friday. Mm -hmm. Shout out Dave Paul. This was before Bomb and the Bomb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Before, before the Bomb. Before the Bomb yeah. magazine. And um I started doing the show with Dave. And then doing that show with, with Dave, I started making relationships with people. And that's how I met Coog Nut. Because Coog Nut and him came by this, uh, the show, uh, Hugh MC, Forte, Paris. That's how I started meeting them go. guys. Yeah, all them cats. It was funny because we, we was very cool with the IMP. And nothing of them already came out with um, I'm Rolling. Mm. And I remember when I was there, they brought Scandalous in for the first time. So when we heard Scandalous for the first time, I'm like, damn. I'm like, just that dude's voice, and he he had bars. Yeah. So just, just man, just to hear that dude's voice, he just, I think he made us want to step our game up because he was he was really about that shit. And it was funny, we would go in the studio with him too sometime, like the old bank road days. We would go in the studio with him. and That was over there on Holloway, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's come yeah. up on this podcast. That's where, we met, that's where we met Selsky. Yeah. Okay. Young, yeah. We did the young cats yeah. sitting yeah. back the there doing this on shit. The young and, 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 and all that shit. But yeah, uh -huh. but Selsky at the beginning, yeah, we, we knew Selsky when, when he was young. He's probably like, because he's a couple of years younger than us. He's probably like maybe 15, 16. Mm -hmm. And he was in there just, man, learning, figuring stuff out. And psh, next thing, Selsky started making fire. Hell yeah. You know shout, out, <laughs> shout out Sal, Nut, yeah. was, uh, was, uh, C Fresh, was was Sick tough, Lou. Was Tough Cut Tim part of the group at this point? You're, yeah, so yeah. like, yeah. so back to our story, like I said, when he was rapping and the homies like telling us we was wasting our time and we like, we need a DJ, the homies like, why don't y'all mess with Chris and Tim? 
Chris and Tim, Chris, Chris and Tim, I guess they was making they all were, the... They were DJs. They, were, they were DJs, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They was making all the mixtapes and stuff like that. So, I Kalia's. think... I think, uh, shout out to uh, Tim and Chris. Yeah, Tim and way. Chris, Talia I brothers. just talked to uh, Tim earlier today. But um, some of the homies took... I think um, your cousin Sam and Eltro took us over there. And, and um, he wanted to be like, what's in, what's in the, the two DJs and two MCs? We was yeah. Gonna, yeah, I, yeah, 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 I kinda, yeah, yeah. I kind of like the way. a group. Yeah. You know what I mean? We yeah. want to be a group. The yeah. way Dougie Fresh and Slick Rick had uh, Barry Bean and Chill Will. Right. You know, kind of like that. Right. We thought that was dope. You know what I'm saying? I, and I, the, the show and all that, man, that was very influential to very inf- influential. So we we, was, we originally influence. we had two DJs, two MCs. That's hard. Yeah. Hell so yeah, that's yeah, what we were yeah. doing at first. But Tim. At the end, you know, they were a little older than us, and you know, guys were working, paying bills. So Tim became more the main focus. And at the end of the day, uh, I guess he was he producing more of the beats too. Yeah, he Tim became was our putting producer that beat together. by default because hey. at that time was he on the SP? Yes, he was. On he the went SP to 12. New York and bought, bought the SP twelve hundred. Yeah, he flew out to New York for a, 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 the convention or something. The new music seminar. The, the new wow. music seminar. He went out there and, and and did his thing. Came back with an SP. Learn how to play that shit, man. He was getting down. We, right. And then we, me and Tone, would bring the records and all right, the samples. Right, right, right. So my so dad group, had all group oh, production. Man, yeah, yeah, yeah. Straight group production. That's dope. Yeah, yeah, all that. Well, all that. What was the first studio? Hog that y'all Status Productions. Got into the first studio. I think we went to was was it Old West when Paris uh, showed? I think we went to somebody's uh, house. Somebody had a house studio, but. Um, Oh yeah, that was, a, that was that was a joke, but uh, that was a moment where we ran out too, huh? Yeah, we, we said we out of here. Yeah, we, we ran said, out. We said fuck it. We bounced on the session. We bounced on the session. Yeah, we ain't got it. We was like, yeah, this is the reason we out. We said fuck that shit. We start over. That's exactly what we did. Paris gave us game, and um, I think uh, Old West with Peter Ecker. Yeah, Peter Ecker was his first studio we went to. Professional shit, and that was right down the block from here too. It was on Harrison or yeah, yeah, or Howard. First it was on Howard, so then they moved to Harrison. Remember, okay. he moved. They moved their shit to a uh, like where Beacon used to be, right here, right down the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. So right it was down, down like South of Market area, right? Is in that in that area. At first it was, and then it moved to like I said, where we just came from, twentieth. Oh yeah, he did move closer down. Right yeah, there to he the did. Freaking twentieth and Harrison. Yeah, he did. Yeah, That's right. right. He said right here in my hood. He said right hog, hog status productions. Where, hog where, status break productions. Break that down for those who don't know. What's what, okay. What is the that, hog status productions? Is me, Tone, and Tim. Okay, now the Hogs is a family from from the 22nd block right here in San Francisco, right here, real close to where we're at right now, too. Like I said, right here in the Mission. And uh, uh, that's a Hogs Dash family. Nice. We used to be a gang. We just, it's, it's, it's a family. It's a Hogs Dash family. We, we used mm-hmm. to be a gang from mm-hmm. the back streets, but he's being uh, mm-hmm. diplomatic about well, it. Shout out, shout out the family. That's something that, um, that is something that, you know, the mission is known for uh, even to this day. What Was that a struggle to have to navigate that shit as well as the rap? And was that kind of something that you had to be like, man, we got to put this to the side? Or was you it know something what? that they, was just they, in the, the mix? The homies did the banging. We, every day at 8 o'clock, right? Tim got yeah. home from work. Tim got off work at 8, our DJ. And he came home, 8.15, 8.30. We was at his house. We was inside. Yeah. We was doing music till, yeah. till, till we was done. Yeah. So... So the homies did the banging. They, you know, they, I, I didn't uh, you, you do not, any time out here in, in, now in the you Bay. Know, you know what's weird to me? We, we was trying to do music to get out of the streets. Yeah. These kids now do music yeah, yeah, to yeah, be yeah. in the streets. Yeah. It's so, like, different. We was trying to get the, out the streets. You know what I'm saying? Because shit was real. We, we had partners that was really hustling. Like, it was really in the mix. You know what I'm saying? And Cat started, you know, as we got older, shit start getting realer and realer. You know, cats start going to jail and shit like that. And we had to make a we had to make a choice. We was going to either go harder or we was going to end up in the same shit as everybody else. So we had, had to start going a little harder. You know, so yeah. I mean, sometimes you need that push to uh, and, and then taking music seriously. You know that that that's how you really get things done when you yeah. really see what you can do with this. And then you see the other outcome, like, oh, shit, this might be kind of bad if I don't find something else to get into. Yeah, sh- shit was starting to get real when we started seeing a lot of we, the homeboys yeah, go to we jail. We lost a few friends. We yeah. lost a few friends and we and had some friends go to jail, so... Yeah, shit started getting uh, real, yeah. you know? Right. So getting into the music, um, y'all started with us. Were you doing demo tapes or did you go right into your first single? We, we 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 did demo tapes at first, but we we realized like 
at that time, everybody was just doing shit independent. So we was like, I think we better take that same route. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you'll be waiting. You'll be waiting forever for somebody to come help you. So we kind of just took that initiative to help ourselves and, and put a record out. And uh, thank God uh, I had a, a a great supportive mom that, you know, you know, she doors my mom helped me out. You know, it's funny. A lot Love of people, doors. a lot of people start on drug money. My mom, a, a couple of partners, you know what I'm saying? He can tell you more about that. You know, we kind of put our money together and we made our first record in the SF streets. Yeah. That's how we did that. We but all, my mom was supportive. That's what's up. My, my mom didn't want me to sell dope. She didn't want me to be in the street and sell dope. She said, so if you don't sell dope or go to jail, she said, I'll support you at anything you do. That's what's up. And I started taking classes at City College and try to just kind of stay out the way. I tried, you know, I was still mischievous and was in the street a little bit, but I tried my best to stay out the way. And mom supported me. That's what's up. That's, That's right. We're good. Yeah. Paris, Paris, the Black Panther of rap, gave us the blueprint. And he said, you go to these people, and this is how you make a record. I never knew we could make a record. It was like Tone. It's always been Tone's vision to, 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 to have a group, to make a record. You know what I mean? I, I, I always liked, wanted to make music. I thought it was fun. But I didn't know we could make a record. You know what I mean? I didn't know we could do that. Um, he wanted to have a group and make a record. And so we started, you know, pursuing that. It was like, it was like we went, we was, we was like the, the Blues Brothers. We was on a mission from God. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We was on a mission from God. <laughs> so we went and found us, we went through some DJs and we found the right ones, the brothers. And then we went and like he said, his mom uh, helped him with a little bit of money. I had a little bit of money. Um, um, Tim had some money because Tim was working already. Tim was a working man. Uh, I borrowed a little bit of money from one of our childhood friends, Alfonso. Shout out, shout out Blinky. Blinky, man. Shout out, shout Blinky. out Blinky. Yep, yep. Um, so, so we all put we all put money together, and we made that first single happen. That that was but but gave us a little buzz in the streets. That, yeah. that total devastation in the SF streets. So that before was, the many clouds, way before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And you were doing an independent thing out the trunk. That was our independent mom and yeah. pop store. Mom and pop. Yeah. Uh, 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 Geneva. What's his name? Joe. Joe Lambert. Joe Lambert. Yeah, we was going to creative music. Oh, that's the ocean. Going, yeah, 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 going, yeah, going, yeah, going, going, going. Yeah, ocean. Peace, Joe. And we went to Walter Zelnick at City Hall. Yeah, City Hall. Like. He said Paris was already making records. I think he he put out uh, ATC's uh, first two records on Scarface Records. Then he did with his, uh, his Scarface, the one that got a sign of Tommy Boy. The Devil Made Him Do It? No, before The Devil Made Me Do It. Whatever he he did, he just gave us his blueprint of what he was doing. Right. And everybody he was using, we just, he wrote out a list. And we just went down a list of stuff like that. So mm -hmm. we seen Walter Zelnick. You know, this was uh, before internet. This was yeah. before internet. Before you could go on, type on, hmm, who does yeah. a graphics? Hmm, yeah. how do you make a record? None yeah. of that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's let's make yeah. that clear. Yeah, none of that. No internet. No, <clears throat> hmm, how do I make a record? Nah, we didn't know. Nobody knew. You had to know somebody. You had to know somebody's phone number. You had to know how to get a hold of them. So Paris basically broke down the names of. The individuals who did the graphics, the individuals who did the printing, the individuals who make the records, you know, the wax. Um, that was a big Here's help. who you need to call. Here's who you need to call. Bernie Zelnick or uh, Walter, uh, Walter Zelnick. Zelnick. Yeah, and then are. Bernie Grunman. Bernie, uh, uh, for big, the... No. Big Bass Brian. Yeah, Big Bass Brian. For, for mastering. We for had to go to yeah. L.A. And, and, and go to, you know, just like, basically, here's the blueprint of how you make a record. And, and we just went... And followed yeah. it. Right shout out down. to Paris because uh, hey, we had, shout we had out to um, Black Panther, around. CMG from Conscious Daughters on here, and she was yes. breaking down how he was real tight with that the man business. was game game yeah. tight. Yeah, yeah smart yeah. guy, smart guy, Oscar Oscar Jackson. That's yeah, dope. Yeah, smart guy. Yeah. So th that shit started booming a little bit. That first thing it was on wax and tape. Or? Tape, yeah. wax, tape and yeah. wax. No CD, no, at no the time. CD, at no the time. CDs, no CDs. No CDs. They wouldn't even make a CD. This is 1980. Eight, 89. 89? Yeah, 89. this is because Little Bernie was just born. Yeah. My first son was just born. Shout out Little Bernie. CDs this is 1989. Were, CDs were just starting to come. But, but we didn't but make the them. major labels were doing that at first. Even the independent artists weren't doing them yet. Yeah. You just seen them with the major labels. Then the independent artists started that, that doing CDs. That SF Streets uh, vinyl is like a collectible now, right? Yes. It's probably pretty valuable if you could stash that. That's yeah, we just well, we just autographed one yesterday. Wow. We were doing some video for this. That's dope. So that that's that started buzzing locally around the bay, around the city, around California. How far did y'all take that first? Um, actually, scene? actually around um, the Bay Area, and the, and the interesting thing, we met a dude. What was his name? Um, Al Perez, the one that hooked us up with the Lowrider car shows. Yeah, yeah. We, Warner Brothers uh, Latino. 
Uh, we are Latina, yeah. We yeah, we yeah, had yeah. a dude that that was kind of affiliated with we we are Latina. He kind of took a, a liking to us, and he started hooking us up on um, low rider car shows. Yeah, that so was we fun. started doing that, yeah. and we was doing them all the way down to what Fresno, <laughs> uh, uh, almost down to Bakersfield. Almost we was. We was kind of like on a little no low rider car, car show. We was circuit. doing shows with Lighter Shader Brown. And this is all yeah. before Mini okay. Calls. Okay. Mini calls so by then, um, once y'all dropped it, it started to open up a little more. Like you said, Lighter Shader Brown, Kid Frost. There Mel you Mel. go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Then that, that being, especially being in the low rider car circuit, yeah. it was, so it was like good mostly timing. Latin. Yeah, I yeah. mean, besides like Candyman. <laughs> yeah, 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 Candyman. We were doing, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. doing stuff with mm-hmm. Candyman too. And it's funny because the dude that we are Latina, he wanted him to do like uh, Kid Frost and Mellow Man Ace type records, but it was funny at that time. I think Cypress Hill was just starting to come out, and we were like, you know, we weren't trying to be like Cypress Hill, but they were kind of like speak Spanish. We so was like, you we don't was speak like, Spanish. we want to do speak Spanish. Yeah. Cy- Cypress was doing hip hop. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We were like, that was we like want to do more like what they're doing. or something like that. 1991, yeah, yeah, 1991. We said, we want to make more hip-hop records. I'm like, this guy don't even like really speak Spanish. You yeah, know yeah, what I'm saying? If so, I did speak Spanish, I would do Latin music because I'd be able to, you know. Because that would be you. <laughs> thank you. I'd be and, able I, to, and I did encourage him. I'm like, and if they, you want to tr- do it, I'm like, it's all good with me if you want to do it, but it's on you if you want to do they it. They wanted you know? to get like, they wanted to get, they were going to write the 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 words for me and have me yeah, say it yeah. and everything, but I just didn't, it wasn't me, I couldn't do it. I think know? that now it's a, it's a lot more open, but back then, like, hip, you know, hip hop was pretty much just recognized as black music, right? Yeah. So if you were white, they would be like, oh, white, yeah, vanilla ice, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 white yeah, boy, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. oh, oh, uh, uh, you're Latin, all right, uh, La Rasa, come on, yeah, give yeah, us exactly, another record like exactly, that. Exactly, exactly, that's but, what they wanted for right. me to him, do, with the he, more Latin. He was I getting wish I respected. Could. He was Speak getting Spanish. respected for his bars. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right, yeah. right. Some right. guys even like, you know, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but when we was going to the East Coast, when we was going to New York, Cats was tripping <laughs> off him like, damn, bro, you sound like Ice Cube or something like that. They was tripping off his voice, you know right, what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Because he kind of That know, was 92, 91, 92. That was right. 91, 92. You know 92, what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was just like that. It was a typical like Because the Latin like, guys they're used to don't talk like I do, you know, yeah, West yeah, Coast. Yeah. They're 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 Obviously, you know, yo kid, East yeah, Coast. Yeah, 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 and it was, uh, it was, know, it was. You know, Go Toes real, went real, through, through an uh, yeah. uh, interview like that where yeah. he's explaining that, you know, I'm Latin, but right. I really don't sound Shout like out a Power traditional, Roll, like, you know, Latin Power Roll and King George and, and them whole cast when we was out there, all them Puerto Rican cats. George, Curious, Curious George, George. Curious yeah, George. Yeah. And King Power Roll. My bad. There you go. I fucking they still, out, they still out there doing it too. <laughs> Shout yeah. out to them guys. So, hey, hey. so y'all ended up getting a record deal off the strength of the SF Streets. We, how no, did we no, no. hook up with PGA? No, um, that was off another. We, we, hooked up, we hooked up with an independent record label at first. And what happened when um, David Paul put out the, the Bond magazine, he did a write up on us and we went to Fresno and recorded a whole album that never came out. <laughs> wow. You we we recorded a couple albums yeah. that we never released just because we, like I said, we didn't know how to make records. It, yeah. We didn't know how to do it. Yeah. It's funny, we snuck in. The dude in Fresno had for like free studio time from like midnight to six in the morning. So we used to go in there sneaking in the studio and get on. We moved out there. We went for like a whole summer. Yeah. We, so we, we lived just, out there and made a record. So yeah. we were just out there and um shit. Shout nothing, out, shout nothing, out Fresno. Nothing happened of it, but we went in the studio again. I think we did a like five songs. Uh Dave did a write-up, I guess, and Patrick Armstrong, he wasn't even um in the music industry, he was in the film. I yeah. think his, I think his dad worked at Morgan Creek Films or something like that. I think he was behind the movie Robin Hood and was sleeping with the enemy. So he worked on stuff like that. And the dude just reached out to us one day and I think he reached out to David Paul. And David Paul gave us the number. Like, this guy's interested in you guys. And we hooked up with him. He was a long hair uh white cat from LA that PGA. Yeah. Pat Armstrong, you need to get at us, man. <laughs> need to get at us. But uh yeah, uh, we hooked up with him, and he was interested in us. At, and at first, what well, we had, was it Come Again and Skins? I think Come Again was going to be the first record we put out. We didn't even make Mini Clouds yet. Mini Clouds weren't even made yet. So he liked us on the strength of other songs we we made. Mini Clouds weren't even in, in the equation yet. So he liked us on other stuff we did. So that's how we hooked up with the independent label PGA. Oh, PGA was an independent. Yeah, PGA was an mm. independent. But uh, Many Clouds ended up coming out on PGA. And Many Clouds Many was Clouds released as an independent story. single. Many yeah, Clouds yeah, is it was a whole an independent story on single song on PGA. that we could get into. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, who else was on PGA at the time? 
no, nobody at the time. The, the dude just, he had aspirations of starting a label. Interesting. And he was looking for a, a group to start it out with. And this was like 92. And when we first met, the dude would, would fly us out to LA and put us in the studio. And we're like, we like this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, I mean, he took us out of our element. Yeah, put us in LA. And we start going into them like big name LA, LA studios. And we're like, shit, we could do this. But like I said, this was still pre Mini Clouds. So let's talk about how how did Many Clouds of Smoke come about? Classic fucking record. Let me ask you before I even get into this. Do you know how many kids you probably influenced to smoke weed off that, <laughs> off that song? Do you uh, me know? And my friends, my, me and my friends knew that song like word for word in ninth grade, bro. Like, hey, I don't know if I'm proud of it. Anytime the tiny ass little five sack was lit up, bro, like that was the song that would hey, go George, into I don't rotation. know if I'm proud of it, but I don't know how many people that came to me and said, said that. I smoked my first joint to y'all record. I'm like, is this a good thing or a bad thing? You know what I'm saying? Me and my friends, me and my friends, Friends all smoke weed in school. Yeah. Yeah. We got that yeah. all. I mean, the we would we would have been smoking weed. Mm -hmm. I got that all. all but it was fun listening all to time. Time. Right, right, right. We right. Right. Play video games. We enjoy smoking weed. Thank you. Right, right, right. Yeah, I was heading out the time. house after yeah. school one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That part, right? That's that youthful hip hop energy all the time. And that fun storytelling. That that beat too. Did that come out? Did y'all flip that? I know that sample is like this jazz. Yeah, that that was from a break record. That was oh. we we didn't like take that from Tribe or anything no, like that. It was, from a, did, it was from a break record, it and they tribe? used it too. Was it I think they tribe? used it before us. I don't okay. know. I, I don't okay. know the time. It wasn't even no, 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 no. Who used it first? Tribe used it before. Okay. They used it before us. Okay, but they're they're like a Lucia. Like a Lucia. Like a Lucia. A little different. They they because it's a break record, so they used it their way. Right. And then when Tim used it. He threw some brothers Johnson Man. in it and some horns, right, and that's right, what right, that right, lit right. it up for us. Right, that, yeah. right. that song, it was like it came in different segments. I mean, the way the song like uh, popped off, and I'm gonna keep it real. Shout out to my boy uh, Black Chris. When I heard RBL Bama Weed, shout out RBL. <laughs> that that set it off to me, and I heard Bama mm -hmm. Weed at a house party, and when I seen the reaction from everybody. The way me and him smoke weed, I think the next day I called him. I'm like, bro, I heard this song called uh, Bama Weed from this group RBL. I said, we need to make a weed song and just tell our own story. So that's how it started. Mm. Listen, to, I'm hearing RBL Bama Weed. I'm, you know, I got to give Black Chris his, his props. That's my guy. Chris is my dude. So, yeah, I got to give it up to him. So it started with that. It started with uh, just hearing that. And then I think we was in the car one day. And I'm what? Dwick? I, I think, no, I think I uttered... Uh, Shit, there's many clouds of smoke in here. So that's how the title started. So then the next thing, uh, I just remember what the hook. happened. I remember the hook. I think what I happened left my next. Philly at home. Do you have another? another? Yeah. Uh, okay, we're going to break all that down. Yeah. We're going to break all that down because as a collective, we all produce many clouds all together. Of us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, me, but, him, and uh, Tim, we, did, we all but, put it together. Tough Cut Tim, this is how it all started. Tim called us one day and Tim was playing this beat. Like, Tim, like, I made this beat. I made this beat. And Tim's not really a talkative dude. He's Gemini. He's not really a talkative dude. But he called us like, I made this beat real excited. We heard it over the phone. We like, we'll be there in a minute. We jumped in the car, drove down to Tim's house. And we, what y'all hear, we heard. But it was, with not all structure, but kind of like what you hear is what we, what we kind of heard. So we like, damn, this song. And it was like, I guess at the time, the best track Tim made at that time. Yeah, hell yeah. So uh, hell yeah. we was like, wow. We was just like, it's just like, wow. You know what I'm saying? We were feeling to be from day one when we first heard it. So the next thing that happened, I was still at City College in San Francisco. And um, what's the name? Had, uh, I guess the record company sent us uh, um, Gang Stars uh, Take It Personal. And on the flip side of Take It Personal was Dwick. We always used to go over to the, flip over to the B side yeah, yeah, to see yeah. what was on the B side. And we heard Dwick for the first time. He was at the station with me that day. It was me, him, and David Paul. And we listened to the song, and we just like, what the fuck? Because, you know, Dwick off the hook. Yeah. And the first time I heard Smooth B said, I left my Philly at home. Do you Smooth got another? B. I want to get blunt at my brother. Smooth the first time B. I heard that shit, I, I, I put it on everything. The first time I heard that sample, I said, I want to use that shit. The very first time I heard that shit, I said, I want to use it. So we used that. And then we back at the lab, and this guy, he just one day just uttered out, you know, I think we'll sound dope with this. I'm an LL fan. LL, 
Pull out LL Cool Shout J's out booming LL system. Shout out LL Cool J. Mm. This was his idea. Roll pull up out, a fat one, pull pass out it around. And Come on, Tim, man. Tim samples it in the in the Emacs and start playing with it. Roll up a fat one and pass it around. I, I want to get blunt of my, my brother, brother just playing with it in the Emacs. And I'm like, damn, that sounds kind of dope. So we just kept playing with it and damn, then, then me and him kind of structured it. We we put it together. Um, Tim would make the beats. He would pretty make the whole beats, but he would let us... Uh, Structure and segment. It would make the, the segment like right, each right, piece right. of the beat. Yeah. Right. Doom, 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 then the <laughs> boop, and having all the pieces. Right, right, right. And then we would get together and just, okay, he would say, I want to rap on that one. Uh, you yeah, know, with I, the different I, sounds and segments that, of the beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I try to get in my engineer mode so I could put that in his piece for him. And then I get the pieces that I want to rap to. And he's playing with it right, on the SP right, twelve hundred. Right. And, and we're we're setting up songs through segments, segments, segments. Oh, sorry, segments, segments, segments through the SP twelve. And uh, like I said, we learned Tim. Tim learned how to use that shit by himself. He he, learned, he taught he us. Mastered it, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you know, together, like we would. It was a process. He would make the beats. He would put like have all the different pieces and all the different sounds of the beats. And then we'd get together and and uh, uh, he, like. Coordinate songs, yeah. put them together. He would give us room to to play with stuff like if we actually like had ideals for samples or stuff like that, he would loop stuff up for us. But I would give him, I give Tim credit on many clouds for every all the samples except uh, I want to get blunt, roll up a fat one and pass it around. Except the two, yeah, yeah, the, 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 the word but samples, like, yeah. but, but all like, the beats, he, he did that shit. But like the beat, the the the, the DLC scratch, just all that stuff, just all that stuff. He he just implemented all that stuff. Yeah, I mean when you, so it was a group effort, pretty when much. He, when you break down that that beat, it definitely sounds like that. It's like very thought out. It's very put together. There's different layers on it, and it just makes it banging in a way that's like I said, different from that tribe version. Um, yeah, yeah. So it stands on its own, kind of. Yeah. And that's crazy that you knew, like, all right, we got to make a, a weed song. Then you had the idea for the title. Then you have the idea for the samples. Then the beat comes along. So did y'all know, like, oh, this, this is it. This is that one right here. I think, I, I think what happened is when we start putting the lyrics together. And at first, I had a whole sixteen. He had the idea. He said, you know what, would be dope. Let's go back and forth. Let's chop this he was up. Kinda, yeah. He was kind of Frankenstein. That's was like, you, me, he me, you. Up papers. Yeah, he had yeah, shit yeah. all over the place. Yeah. And so he started like, let me see. He said, let me see your verse. I write up, write out your whole verse. And he like, let me use these first four bars. Let me use this. And then we just start incorporating. And then his verse, like what I was headed off the house, off to school one day, the, the real long part, because that song, if you listen to it, it's not structured, but it's a, is it it's a 16 a, or it's 32? It's a 24. No, eight, eight, there's, there's it ain't 16. Not, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no 16. Right, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. 24, 32 is a long and song. And the story behind that, everything he was writing, it just sounded so dope. He wanted to, he, he was about to throw some of the shit away. And I'm like, fuck that. I'm like, keep that shit. You know what I'm saying? Because I think it was some of the, at that time, it was some of the best shit that we did at that time. Yeah. I think Many Clouds was our lightning in a, in a bottle. We didn't realize it yet, but it was just, that was our lighting, lighting in a bottle. And the shit he was like writing, and I'm like, nah, dude, keep all that. Yeah. And it was just like, we was going to put the shit out independent anyway, so we weren't tripping off shopping into a major label we or anything like that. We didn't think that. it would get radio play because they weren't playing music that so, talked about weed yeah. so in we 1992. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We they did not play that level. on the radio. Yeah. If you said weed, it got blurted out. I Got Five on it wasn't out yet. Uh, uh, Mr. Grimm didn't come out yet until right before us or right around us, the uh, Indo Smoke. Mm -hmm. They were not talking. Not you that. could not talk about smoking weed and doing the kind of shit like you do on the radio nowadays. This yeah. shit was not happening. So we were able to to knock down some doors and actually get some radio play from KMEL yeah, when, yeah. It, when it when it when it first well, happened. So that that was, was like a surprise. Was that for, so? You released it first on your own independently yes, before yeah. PGA picked it up. No, no PGA no. released that. PGA, PGA released, released many clouds. PG, yeah. P, uh, Pat Pat brought us to LA and recorded. He paid for all of that. When, when, so, you, when you took that to him, was he like, "Oh shit, yes"? I, got, I don't even know if he heard many clouds. Check this out. We went I got, out there. I, I got the story. He came to do a video yeah, shoot. Yeah, he came to get us actually, for a actually, video. The, the, the picture you see of the Mini Clouds 12-inch, uh, Yeah, he was coming. That was going to originally be the 12-inch for Come Again. There you go. When he came over, him and his, his photographer came to Tim's house, 
because we was going to take uh, photos that day. We played Mini Clouds for him live off the SB12 and the what's the name? And we and rapped E-Mac, it to him. And we mm-hmm. rapped it to him live. He lost his freaking mind. He said, let's go record when, this. When, when yeah. we lost it, he's like, oh, we need to put this out. You know what I'm saying? When we wrapped it to him live, then I think what he called his dad on the phone or something, wherever, the money guy. He was like, man, these guys got a record. I think we need to put out. The other shit is cool, but we need to put this out. So that's how that happened. He came to We do went a photo out there shoot. one day, recorded it, came right back. Wow. We drove out there, recorded the song, yeah, we, came yeah, right we back. We drove to LA. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we drove to L.A., recorded it, and came back home. Recorded it, mixed it that night, everything. The, the, I remember the engineer was like, are you sure? Are you guys? This, You're like, no, yeah, this is the one. Yeah, this, this is, is it, motherfucker. We do, we, yeah, we done. Yeah. This is it. We, yeah. we ain't coming back. Actually, I yeah. fell asleep during the whole mix. I, yeah. I was asleep during the whole mix. Shit. They woke me up when the mix was done. Tim was getting down. They, uh, the, the engineer, we, we yeah. fucking, yeah. They, I, I give credit to Tim, him, and Tim's brother, Chris. They really mm-hmm. put the mix together. I uh I fell asleep because I was tired because we was there all damn day. Oh, and man. um they woke me up. I heard it. And when I heard it, I'm like, let me hear it one more time. <laughs> I like put water on my face and everything. I'm like, let me hear it one more time. And when I when I heard it, just the way y'all hear it, same way I heard it, I'm like, I think that's it. Yeah. You know, I, I think that's it. What what was the response when that came out? Well, was I, it immediate or no, did it take I'm, a while? No, no, it, it wasn't immediate. I'm going to tell you one one no. thing that tripped me out when we was at Big Bass Brian, when we was at Bernie Grumman's. Um, when we get a master. Legendary, yeah. legendary, when we get a legendary master. Uh, Big Bass Brian, he was mixing our shit. And I remember he turned around and looked at us. He like, I think y'all got a hit record. He looked at us. And this was a legendary, you know, engineer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, I think y'all got a hit record. Mm-hmm. And we was, that kind of gave us goosebumps. This is Big Bass Brian, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, wow. So after that, yeah, we 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 put it out independently. And it was what? Crickets. Yeah, that was quiet. Oh, but <laughs> hey, Nothing Big Brace Brian, he was what? Like, real popular from doing all the NWA like, records. NWA. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. You know, he was, yeah. he was like doing, he was mastering all the records from yeah, the dudes, LA, big stuff. LA dudes. Okay. All the Rufus, yeah, Rufus all the yeah. Record, yeah, yeah, yeah. So all when, when he told us that, he was like, man, you guys got a hit. I, that was like, I, I, that, he was the first one. And then, we didn't get anything, any, any, like we put it out to the radio stations, KPU, all the little ones did the colleges and didn't get any big response until fucking Billy Vidal, shout out Billy Vidal, played that shit in the mix on KMEL. Mm. And that shit went, cool, I got goosebumps just now. That shit, after that, that song fucking played all day. I remember Chewy Gomez saying, every fucking call is, is, is for the weed song. Fuck, every <laughs> so, fucking call is for the weed song. So so what happened, Billy Vidal and Kevin Nash played the record Shout for the first Kevin time Nash, at, at 2 a.m. on a 2, a, 2 a.m. show. In the show. Mix show. Wow. And yep. his cousins start calling us what, 2, 3 in the morning. I thought I just heard y'all shit on the radio. You know what I'm saying? Then the next thing, I think maybe Sway, you know, I think the Wake Up Show probably, probably played it a couple of times. But then um, the funny story is when we found out we got in rotation, I was still working a nine to five job. <laughs> and the f- funny shit, I got to tell this story. I was working at Levi Strauss and um, he didn't even tell me yet. This bastard, he didn't even tell me. So w- what time did Rick Chase come on from like two to six? Yeah, he was prime time. So what I like. He, he was uh, like two to uh, six. Yeah, so maybe one to five. Something so like I'm, that. I'm, I'm working in a warehouse and... We listened to the radio in the warehouse. And I shit you not, Mini Clouds came on at 2, two what, p.m. in the afternoon. I'm like, what? So I'm like, I told my supervisor, I'm like, can I take a break? <laughs> so I ran to the pay phone because we didn't have cell phones then. I ran to the cell phone, called him. I had a cell phone. He didn't have a cell phone. <laughs> yeah. I, I had a cell phone. He okay? had the brick. He had I the did. brick I had a brick ass motherfucker. <laughs> Shout out. My brick ass cell so phone, but I had a phone. So I called him. I'm like, bro, we, is we on the radio? He tells me, yeah, bro, we, we we just found out today. They put us in rotation. So I'm like, okay. So I go back to the where, warehouse. Three o'clock comes. They play us again. So one of my coworkers is right there. And I, I walk up to him. I'm like, hey, bro, you want to hear something funny? He said, what? I'm like, that's me on the radio. And dude told me, like, Nigga, if that's you on the radio, why the fuck you working here for? <laughs> so that was my cue to quit the job. You mean I quit a couple of days later. So. <laughs> that's what's up. You're like, what am I doing here? What the fuck? He said, what the fuck you doing here if you on the radio? So after that, when um, Cameo uh, picked up the record, it's just kind of like, 
to start took spreading. Yeah. Kind of just blew up and took off. Now, can I ask you something? I heard this. I heard that <clears throat> Ebro, radio personality, originally he was in Sacramento. I heard that mm-hmm. he basically stopped playing the song in the middle of playing it and said he he doesn't want to play it no more or something like that. Who Bro. Ebro? I thought, wait, that, bro, Ebro, from, when we went into Sacramento and we had that, and we had that debate with that dude on the radio, okay, that not, was Ebro. Not, okay, but not, not, okay, what's, what's Sway's guy's name? E something. Ain't Ebro. got nothing to do with Sway, bro. Okay, okay, Ain't okay, got nothing to okay. do with Sway. Shout out okay. to Sway, by the way. Okay. No, no, feel us. When we went to Sacramento and dude shut down his radio station and started talking all that shit, and we was debating with dude for like a whole hour or two hours. That was Ebro. It Wait, was that a was, young so that Ebro. Was, that was a radio appearance? That was a radio Hold on, interview. say that into the mic, because I don't that was, miss, yeah, I don't that was a part. radio. Yeah, I'm, I ain't no punk about mine. It was a radio interview. What he happened? St- he said, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> this nigga. This run nigga, that boy. <laughs> that, this e- nigga. Right, okay, let's start that again. Let's get this on the record. You remember when we went to Sacramento and dude shut down our shit? You remember all that controversy? They wouldn't play us in Sacramento. I remember that. But you, because of that controversy. What okay. happened? What, tell him what happened. Don't tell I, him. Tell him. I, I, what happened? Okay, but Don't who, say nothing. I got this. Okay, okay. But Ebro's a DJ. He was a radio person. He's a radio personality. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Ebro's a big head at, uh, at a radio station. I-97 in New York. Something like that. He's a, he's a big wig in New York. Okay. Yeah. This nigga don't need to talk no more. But he, right. <laughs> Shout out Ebro. All right. But, but anyway, what happened? We, hey. we go up to... Let me tell a story. This is real ahead. shit. Okay. But anyway, tell we me. go up to New York. I mean, we go up to Sacramento, this guy. We go up to Sacramento to do uh, an interview. And we feel like we got sabotaged in the middle of the interview. We didn't even know this was coming. You know what I'm saying? The dude just started talking crazy like, you guys are talking about smoking weed and you're you're promoting drugs to kids and all this. So they twisted around on us and I had to catch myself and kind of like bounce back on him because he caught us off guard. And so that's how that happened. And next Wait, thing so you know, y'all... Sacramento wasn't playing our music no more, but big up to Sac because I live in Sacramento. So big up to Sac, but that's what happened. So you, you know? had a whole debate with him on the air. On about... the air. They shut, they shut the music down. They weren't playing no music. We had a big debate on Was the radio. <laughs> You was there, brother. Okay. You was there, trust me. All right. All right. On mama's kids, everything, brother. You was there. I don't remember none of this, Sacramento, Ebro. I don't remember none of this. So Man, no, uh uh too many E pills. No. Go ahead. <laughs> too many Thes pills. Go ahead. Well, shit, man. Um, so what, what what was it that you heard though? About the, the I heard that basically that. That uh, we had a debate? This is no, a classic, I, heard, I heard that this is classic right I didn't here. hear about the debate. I heard that he just cut it in the middle of the planet, like Boo! Like, I'm not playing this anymore. It promotes weed to the kids. I'm tired of hearing it. I hear it too much. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to play it That's what happened. Anymore. Okay. But that's, that's crazy But was me. we there? We was there? And we was that? at the I station, didn't know y'all brother. Were there. Trust me. We was at the station. Okay, okay. He shut the station down. Okay. We was debating. Okay. okay. <laughs> Trust me. We was there, brother. Okay. Trust that's, me. That, but that's the DJ that got mad at me because I something about, we said something about getting pulled over. And, and I was like, well, I'm 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 not white. Is Evo white or black? He's black and white. He's, He's black, black and white? white. Okay, yeah. no, that wasn't that dude. Okay. <laughs> I think it might because we ain't really got into too many funk with too many too many interviews. Okay. That was the only like off kilter interview we ever had like that. That, right, that right, that's man. that's a crazy story. One, because it just shows back then how rare it was to have a song about weed be a mainstream thing. We, we then, was taboo back bro, then. They, they, they wouldn't play it on stations. But like the other said. tweak is now, and this makes me wonder. Then they wouldn't sell it in stores. This Remember makes a couple me stores. wonder how many drug songs does Ebro play on the radio now? I'm a lot. I'm just saying. I'm just kind of curious. I ain't curious. no punk. A lot. <laughs> I'm just curious. Hmm. I'm going to speak for everybody. A lot. <laughs> Well, everything. Uh, Ebro, if you're out there, tap in. Let's, let's chop it up about Hey, this. shout out, Ebro. We got another many clouds of smoke coming for you, brother. Don't even trip. With, 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 with Burner and Baby Bash. And Burner and Baby Bash. Hey, hey, how you keep your beer long? I'm trying to work on that. So, <laughs> so but but then, so the single comes out, then the, that's followed by the album, right? So, so yeah, the single comes no, out. No, like, we didn't have the album ready. No, yeah, yeah. At yeah, all. We didn't have a whole, whole album ready. I'm trying to get the timeline ready. straight. Okay. Uh, go go ahead though. Go ahead. So uh, I guess when the single came out and it started blowing up, then they told us we needed to do an album. We uh, okay. we ended up in a a bidding war, and we didn't realize it at first until like who wanted to get us at us at first. And Justin know a lot of he, he was kind of like in the equation of, sh- of shit. Yeah, because we Cause both lived. We all lived together at time. We all lived together. So yeah. I think uh, 
Rap a lot was the first one that, that that tried to get at us. We we met with them. We talked it, and here and in the, then, right here in the city. And then um, delicious vinyl. That was that was no, past no, no. friends. That was their friend. No, this guy calls us one day. A guy from Def Jam named Kevin Mitchell calls us. We working on music in L. A. He calls us and like, hey, dude, some dude from Def Jam looking for y'all. You remember that? Yeah. He said some dude from they Def Jam. They wanted to do it. They wanted to do a developmental deal though. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was so, yeah, that's the way they get down right. or so, got down that's at that the time. Creative control. Yeah, yeah at deal. the time that yeah. developmental deal. So, we wasn't ready for that. So what happened? And then was, the, the the label that uh, ended up signing Forte too, right? EMI. So what? EMI. We what, 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 we talked with EMI. No, we what, talked with what happened was uh, we went to L. A. No, not L. A. But the New Music Seminar in New York. And we didn't realize we sat we with Def Jam. We was shout out Lior. We ended up in a we got to war. fucking sit with Lior. Like like labels were calling us, but when we went to New York, and we got to sit with Clyde Davis. There, everybody like I think how many meetings we took like three or four. We different took a meetings. bunch. We took a bunch. So we went to Def Jam, EMI, EMI Def Jam, fucking uh, Epic. Uh, that one <laughs> I don't remember shit. Yeah, Epic, <laughs> Epic Records. <laughs> But anyway, we we took a we we went to uh, Def Jam and sat down with Leor Cohen. I and do Leor, remember Leor and, ass. And Leor was the first one because we didn't know how many records we were selling. And Leor, I'm gonna imitate Leor Cohen. He was like, uh, when we sat down, he was like, "Do you guys know how many fucking records you're selling?" And we like, "No, <laughs> you guys sell fifty thousand records. You're selling fifteen thousand records a week." Do you fucking singles? Do you know how much money singles. that is? Yeah. You're selling fucking singles. He like, we need to put the fucking whole album out on you guys. No, but who so he wanted somebody, he wanted to do a developmental deal, was gonna yeah. send somebody to fucking yeah, work with wanted, us. He wanted to develop. No, he, he wanted to put us on uh uh Def Jam West mm. with uh, Warren G was on. They was developing that. It was trying to put us on DJ West. That's what it was called. So what ended up happening when we was in a bidding war with everybody, Arista Records got us, and we went to Arista because Hosh Gorelli, that used to be a DJ at Camiel, he kind of came at us, and when we went to Arista, they said, we'll sign you guys, and we'll give you creative control of your whole album. We'll stay out the way. And that's what ended up happening. That's why we went to Arista, because they gave us the money, and they gave us creative control. So they dropped the Total Devastation album? Yeah. Was on Arista? Okay. yeah, we ended up signing to Arista. Even on PGA we, Arista. PGA Arista. Because Pat was still involved. The uh, dude that... that, uh, that, that so uh, he like came with y'all. Yeah, well, and he, I, he put the deal together because we uh, had signed to PGA before we signed to oh, Arista. Oh, so it was exclusive already. Yeah, we were already... Okay. We and I'm going to tell you how stand-up dudes And we, we didn't have to do that either. We could have yeah. we, we stabbed him in the back. Fuck yeah, we, we could have walked to, right away from dude. When we went to New York, we weren't even under contract with him yet. When we first put... We did it on a handshake. When all these labels came at us, even our attorney like, you know you guys can sign a deal without him. You guys ain't on what's the name. And we like, nah, man, this dude believed in us when nobody else believed yeah, in us. Yeah, he's the one who brought so us out there and put the, we, yeah, put the record together. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we did we did a deal with him and shit, in return, shit, he gave us a 100% of our publishing. Arista Records went happy with it because all the samples we had, they made us clear every sample. Yeah. So Arista like- We had, had a lot of fucking samples, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We next, sampled next a fucking three, lot. Next to three feet high and rising, I think we had most of the next high samples on a record. Next to three feet high wow. and rising. That's dope. Yeah. That, that album um, really, again, like I could tell y'all like really leaned into the weed shit. You got songs like the Hemp Rally on there. The album cover was this. Were y'all realizing like, oh, this is our lane now? Like we were, we we were the beginning of that. We were the first hemp hoppers. We were the first ones to ever talk about hemp marijuana. Period. Total devastation. Look it up. If you look up the 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 history of hip hop music, hemp hop music. People talking about hemp, marijuana, the positive uses, songs like you said, Hemp Rally, songs like Hemp Hemp Parade, um, um, doing Cloud stuff Nine with Vibe. Cloud Nine Vibe, doing stuff with Jack Herrera, doing stuff with uh, Michael M. from Hemp. Um, we we incorporated that in our music. Not only that, on our album, we, at the time, like I'm saying over and over again, there was no internet. You couldn't go online and find no shit. So we put all of the information you needed on our album cover so that you could open it up and read about uh, 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 hemp and where to find um, um, uh, normal and, and, and the organizations that, that uh, uh, 
advocate the legal, the marijuana, movement. the legalization yeah. movement that wasn't alive at all. There was nobody advocating marijuana in hip hop in 1992, 1991. You know, when we did this, uh, and, uh, and Cypress, the Cypress came and did it. They came and did it uh, from from Southern California right around the same time. Um, I don't remember if it was their first or second album when they started doing more advocation for marijuana. The second, album. The the second. first one was like um, uh, how I could just kill a man. There you go. There you go. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, same, same, same thing. Um, like I said, when we were able to share that information at that time, because at that time there was no internet, there was no social media, there was no sharing that information unless you knew somebody's phone number or pager number. <laughs> And, and basically, it was a lane that we not really tapped into yet. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. We noticed it was really not like a lane tapped into. And it was stuff that we were starting to find out about that people weren't talking about. And we like, we should tap into this. And, and, at, and at the same time, we come from that era where you have to be different, fresh, and innovative. We love all the guys from, from San Francisco, from the city. But we just wanted to be different. We wanted to carve our own lane. We didn't want to sound like everybody else. I love TC. I love all these guys. Nut, uh, Black Chris, all these guys. I mean, um, you know, Totally Insane. I mean, all these guys. Cold World Hustlers. I mean, all them guys was our dudes. Big Mac. I hey, mean, shout all out them to dudes. Judy I. I mean, yeah, man, come on, man. All these, those, those are our guys. But at the end of the day, we just, we was, we was creative dudes. You know what I'm saying? And we was... We just wanted to like just carve our own lane. We didn't want to sound like everybody else. We just want to sound different. Did the cannabis community embrace you guys for that? Like oh, yeah. fuck. Oh yeah, man. They they loved us. Big time. <laughs> Big time. Day, I mean, uh, we could yeah. go, we could go up north to Eddie Left's house. We could go, like I said, we perform and, and smoke weed with Jack Herrera. You know, we was we going to major, major we, like we, grower's we just, house and shit. We just yeah. go to fucking we'll, we'll perform in a grower's living room. You know what I mean? You want to fucking invite us to come smoke and fucking enjoy. Yeah, yeah we we're there. You That's know that we've done it plenty yeah, of times. No, the, the, yeah. the cannabis yeah. community yeah, 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 definitely yeah. embraced us when yeah. we was doing the music. Even when we went on the um high times tour and we Went to like Colorado back in the day, New Mexico, Arizona, and they were zero tolerance states at the time. But you know, yeah. they had like a little small community that was, you know, you know, trying to embrace the cannabis. But yeah, we definitely got embraced by the community. Uh, another thing I wanted to ask about, like, because when I hear a song like "Wonderful World of Skins" and then on the on many clouds of smoke, you talking about safe sex. Was that another thing you were intentional about? Because that was a big thing in the early nineties. The whole the age shit and the in the in the condom. big time, big was, time, and we was having sex. So fuck, I have safe sex. You know, what I mean, we 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 lost uh, 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 Easy E because you know uh, uh, unprotected sex, and uh, I was I was definitely intentionally dropping that. If I was talking about having sex, and you heard me talk about having sex, I was talking about having safe sex, protect yourself. Uh, 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 no sex without latex. I can't remember all the different uh, ways I I spit it, but every time that, I was talking about that was just kind positive, of that vibe positive, around yeah. then because That's people was like preaching like the AIDS, kind of thing. And, and, money, and safe stuff. sex, and a whole lot of weed. Yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, all the AIDS awareness stuff and stuff like that. So we was just it was just that time. It was, it was that period, in that time. Um, man, who the fuck was directing y'all videos? Because the videos is dope as fuck. And they're both like hella creative. I'm like, videos? We only had one. <laughs> Shit. What's up? Well, we wonderful had a of skins. Skins, was skins, skins. Right? Yeah, it was Pat and Pat, us. Pat, 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 and Pat, us. Pat, was, that, was, that was Pat, like he said. Pat was the. Because hey, I just I, saw that not too long ago for the first time. I was like, oh, shit, I've never seen this one. That's when y'all. But a lot, a lot of those like ideas, Golden Gate Park or something. That, that, like that? We in uh, Glen Park. That, that Glen, Glen Park. Park. That was Glen Park. We, that was his car. That was me, but that was us with the ideas. That was me having the idea for the chiropractor. That was, you know, that was our our ideas, but then it Pat putting everything together because Pat did our both of our videos. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, he, yeah. he originally came from a, you know, a filming background. So he background. was the executive and he directed the, yeah. the videos. Because yeah. he came from a and filming that, background. And yeah. the Many Clouds of Smoke videos in Cycle City. I mean, it's all over the city. Man, and Malibu. And, no, not Malibu. Um, but the, no. the, the the TD logo is part oh, yeah, of that. Yeah, TD logo, that, that was Cycle, Cycle City. City. Who painted yeah, that? Uh, White boy. A, a, a kid from um, L.A. named Todd, I think. Oh, shit. Todd. Todd. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, was, that was Pat's dude, right? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. He, he brought him down. He came out LA. there and did that shit dope. He, we 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 videoed him painting that shit. Yeah, but and did those videos get rotation like uh, MTV or or the box? The we box, got, big box, on the yeah. box, and we the got, Playboy channel. Yeah. Shout out to Playboy. Thank you, Hugh, oh, Hugh Hefner. Shit. Thank you for bumping my video. <laughs> actually, yeah. uh, MTV and BET liked it, our video. 
but they wouldn't they play, don't play no weed. Of the, because they don't of the play weed no weed stuff. content. But like guys like uh, Ralph McDaniel's and um, I think what we at the number one or two video on the on the box on the box. Yeah, we was we was in the top rotation. I think, of the I box. think we at the number one video in the country on the box. I, I think video. at one time. Yeah, and then. Yeah, the Playboy channel, that was the one. That, that was, was dope. That's when Sir Mixer like that put yeah. it on the glass at the yeah, time. Man. Yeah, man. <laughs> when, when our video came yeah, on the Playboy on the channel at yeah. the Playboy so, uh, After Dark every, or Late yeah, at Night. Yeah. And that's, that's like everywhere. Right yeah, so being on the Playboy channel, yeah, that was... Yeah. Hey, thank you, Hugh. We'll yeah. take it. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> so uh, as, you, as you're getting into this major label release, album's doing well. Uh, how was how is the business end of things holding up for y'all? I, gu I guess it was holding up Cool, cool. At first, I guess everything was fine and dandy until, uh, but I guess when we started what, having sample problems. <laughs> we had sample that, problems from the giddy up. Yeah, yeah. I think, I too think many we samples. Had, we did too much sample. I think, I think we was having sample problems a little bit. Then um, I think, I think shit hit the fan when we we did a single for for Hint Rally, and Funkmaster Flex did a remix for us for the Hint Rally. And Flex was was bumping that shit. Matter of fact, he was playing it in New York. Uh, I don't know what happened. I think this was like kind of like the beginning of the end because we was kind of like bickering with with the label, and I think we was kind of like got into a, a situation where we was about to get industry blackball, and a lot of guys in the Bay Area, a lot of different artists went through that. Yeah, and we went through the same thing. So I think that's kind of like where we started because we was really arguing. With the motherfuckers at the label at Arista. It wasn't like, you know, um, it was like on some fuck you shit, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was them type of conversations. We wanted our second single to be Hemp Rally. Hemp Rally. Hemp Rally was supposed to be the single. Hemp Rally was supposed to be the video. And they and, wanted to And be they skins. wanted to do skins because they wanted something more commercial. They wanted to go away from the weed. We wanted to go towards the weed. Right. So, so of course, they won that one. But um, after that, uh, the relationship just was uh, not the same. Yeah. You want to hear a cold thing. Um, Diamond D did a remix to The Wonderful World of Skins. We wanted to do a remix. We wanted to do, to do a video to the Diamond D version. They're like, no, do, a re do it to the original version, the album version. So that became a fight too. Mm. So it was just fight, fight, fight because we was just trying to do something that was going to cause some excitement and... Come on, man. If they would have pushed that real flex, hip -hop shit. Flex, flex and Diamond, Diamond D. D. Yeah, Come on, man. Say, Come on, man. Diamond D. A lot of people yeah. from, from, they, from the city or the Bay Area can't say that. They don't even know. Yeah, that's yeah. 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 about to see. People don't a even know that they did remixes that. for us like yeah. that on a, on a, on a major label. I'm glad you brought that up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, because I look at, at your discography, like is, there's like a seven-year gap between the first album and, and the Stone Age album. Yeah. What, what, what happened there? Um... Trying to get off Arista at first. <laughs> oh, he's had you yeah, on lock, I, huh? Yeah. Um, they wanted another, another album from us, so we start being assholes. It says, it says seven years? Yeah. 2000, I believe, well, we, Stone we, Age. Well, well and, we put... And, uh, what happened, we put... No, Stone Age came out in 96. No, we, we, put, we put it out in 96, but we... Put it out again. They got released because we got released, a deal with Selecto. Yeah. Oh, we did a deal with Selecto. Put it back out. Yeah, yeah we did oh, a deal yeah. with Selecto oh. hits, and that's when it really went nationwide. Oh, Stone Age okay. kind of went like nationwide when we did it on Selecto hits, but we did it ourselves at first, mm -hmm. so it didn't get the exposure until Selecto hits was involved. Selecto hits got it in more stores. Yeah, you know, yeah. they got it in all the big I saw, stores. I saw so somebody, that's what happened. I saw somebody write something about that. That about the different releases, about the mighty clouds of smoke and the different releases of Stone Age. So the original Stone Age came out in 1996. We released that on our own. Oh yeah, we, we released we, it on we, our own. We broke yeah. off from Arista. We did it independently. And 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 uh, oh, I see. In 1997, okay. Hog Life Records. Hog Life Records. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah, ours. That was that, me and Tone. Okay. okay, we did it in 96. But if it says 97, let it be. Um, but either way, that. That is something we released again on our own, just like our first single in the SF Streets. And then uh, uh, PGA, the guy who uh, originally put out the Many Clouds, Many Clouds and who we were on the first deal with, he took that project. He added a couple more songs that we had recorded. Uh, with, with, with Peanut Butter Wolf, actually. Yeah. We did some stuff, stuff with Peanut Butter, Peanut Butter Wolf. Yeah. Some stuff we did when we were in L.A. Um, and a lot of stuff and, wasn't and, even... And the architect. Around real quick. There yeah, yeah, there you go, my bad. Okay, and, so um, architect too. We just yeah, stuff for architect. Shout too. out Gary and uh, uh, peanut butter. Um, but yeah, uh, 
he put some stuff, some songs on there that weren't even, that weren't really mixed. That, so that he, stuff that we didn't, that he, we he didn't, didn't finish. On, or On the under, just like, oh, hmm. Did he, he, he told us, no, no, he no, told no, us no. what he was doing, but we didn't have like have paperwork or any yeah, like a deal. We didn't have a deal. Together, yeah, yeah we didn't have no deal. Together, okay, so he, he, he said, you know what, guys? I have this music that you guys recorded. What do you want to do with it? You know, we didn't, like I said, we didn't mix it down. We didn't finish it. It was unfinished music. Yeah. Um. And uh, he decided that he was going to take the Stone Age, the original Stone Age, that me and Tone, I don't know if he's on the internet or wherever you might find it, on the original Stone Age, me and Tone are standing on the top of a building in San Francisco and we're both wearing 49er jerseys. And then when Pat re-released it, it's the Stone Age and it's a close-up of me and Tone that he took a picture of us in LA. And that one is the same songs with... More with, four, with, with five five, five bonus, bonus cuts right, from right, LA, right, right? But like I said, that was unfinished music. Um, I wasn't all too happy about that, yeah. I could imagine, yeah. And, and yeah. So, y'all kind of been on a hiatus since then, man. You know what? I, I stopped making music, period. Yeah. What, what, what my brother, you? the only reason he the only reason that, that we are doing music now. What today. made you want to get out the game? Um, I just got a bad taste for everything, the music industry. Period. I just, yeah, I just, happens. I want to get away from music industry. And, and I think, I, I think around the time, I think when, when, when Pac got killed, uh, when, when uh, Mr. C from RBL got killed, um, that shit start turning us off when cats start getting killed. I'm like, damn, if you got to die to do that, I don't even want to do this shit. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And I just got married and had a, 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 almost, you know, I had a child myself. So that's was, like I said, it was a different time. And, Shit starts shifting, so I'm like, damn, we gotta die for this. I don't even want to do it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this shit, I I, I stand for, it, but not dying over no stupidity. I wasn't gonna do that. So what? What was it like? Uh, what did y'all transition into after after putting the raps to the side? Hustling Broadway. <laughs> Hustling Broadway. Oh, shit. Broadway. Garden strip clubs. Ends. Garden <laughs> ends. <laughs> so I'm sitting on his couch. It's his fault. <laughs> Sit on his, so his sitting fault. on his fucking couch. <laughs> and he calls me and, and and he says, he says, Burn, I'm 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 I got this job I'm on short, Broadway. I'm short of person. And 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 they want me to DJ. He wanted to be a manager. He's a manager of he of strip clubs, DJ, uh, my bad, nightclubs, bars. My brother been managing, you know. Bars since he's 16, his mom's old. And we're bars. about to go into a great story yeah, with so, this one. So, so he calls me up and he says, I don't want to DJ. I need your ass to come over here and DJ. I, I, they, and and it, all they told him, they said, you know, okay, you want to manage, hire, get us some employees. So he brought him in, me as a DJ. I got in the strip club and I'm looking at a four track with four CD players and a microphone just like this. I'm used to being in the studios. They're like, can you work one of these? I, I, Next to the stage, guys, coming your way. <laughs> chicka, 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 chicka. Oh, boy. Hey. I'm still a DJ in a strip club, okay? Just, I'm still doing that shit. And, but yeah. and, yeah. they give, and they give you a fun fact. Our boy Burner, you know Burner? He calls, himself, Burn. broad, he calls himself Broadway Burner. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shout out, Burner. Every yeah. time Burner, and respect to our guy Burner, every yeah, time yeah. Burner sees him, he calls him the original Broadway yeah, burn. Yeah, right, right, that's right. the original burn. I'm the Broadway original burn. burn. I'm so, the original right. burn. Yeah, and, for sure. And, that, and that's dope. I've seen Burner call him that a couple of times, and I think that's real dope. You know, he he pays homage to him like, man, that, that's the original Broadway I'm going to tell burn. you what. Okay, check <laughs> this part out. All right, when, now, when we took over Broadway, what year was that? They did take it over. Okay. I ain't got nothing to do with it. 97, 98, okay. <laughs> we, were, we were there at a good time because at this time, Deja Vu had just hit town. Okay. They took, they took over every strip club on Broadway. So they're buying, they bought centerfolds, they bought showgirls, they bought a uh, 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 hustler, which used to be the Palladium, a nightclub. Um, um, showgirls, from. showgirls used to be a nightclub. <laughs> showgirls used to be the Stone. Um, they bought Garden of Eden. They bought the Casbah, which was next to the video game store or the video game arcade. They bought. Uh, uh, Condor. The Condor. Mm -hmm. they, they bought the whole block. They bought Temptations, <laughs> which they turned into Little Darlings. Mm -hmm. They fucking bought the whole block, like I said. They bought the whole block. Yeah, so so we were lucky enough to be part of that, like I said. And he was managing. I was DJing and managing. We had a couple clubs that we uh, we were able to turn into... Um, um, Early dispensaries, mm. you know what I mean. So we were we were on Broadway, <laughs> we were on Broadway killing the game, you know. So yeah, I mean, before we was really legal. I mean, in '96, I think it started to be um, a medicinal, but you know, like like he said, '97, '98, 
we had our own dispensaries That's on Broadway. We That's was killing the game, okay? <laughs> Shout out yeah. my guy, Jason Money too, because Jason, the, 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 one of the owners of Deja Vu, he told me, he said, Bernie, I don't give a fuck if you sell weed. Still don't do it in my fucking club. <laughs> All right? And I, I remember that, so... Shout out, Jason. Thank you. Yeah, people don't know uh, that that Broadway track is uh that's man that's a money, slice of Frisco. so much money, man. Because it's a slice of Frisco. Broadway. People don't usually see it. They don't put that one on the postcard. Mm-hmm. Nah, nah, nah. They don't. Come check out Broadway. Um, but speaking of dispensaries, I mean, y'all. Like I said, we talked at the beginning of this interview about the dirt weed days, and now weed. I mean, weed is crazy, bro. Like even for me, thinking of how it used to be like a mission to go get it. It used to be sacked up. It used to be, you know what I'm saying, a lot more expensive. Um, a lot lot less people smoking than, than smoke now. It's like, damn near everybody smokes. Yeah. Um, it's the, acceptable. It's acceptable. Yeah, socially acceptable. What, what do you think about the whole cannabis game now and, and how everything's changed? I love it. I love to see, yeah. I love to see uh, everybody be able to consume medicinal products if you want to. I mean, we're we're allowed to have a drink if we want to. We're allowed to smoke a cigarette if we want to. So we should be allowed to smoke a fucking joint or uh, a bowl if you want to, period. I like that people are more uh, open-minded about it than they were in the future. It's just like, uh, you know, my you know my uh, older aunts and uncles, you know what I'm saying? At one time, they wouldn't even touch that shit. Now they would at least try a gummy or some edibles or something like that because, you know— for the medicinal purposes. And um, yeah, it's just a change. I mean, we just just seen a whole change. And just as far as this business, um, me and this guy was talking one day. I'm like, did you ever think in a million years you would have a dispensary and I would be bringing legal cannabis to you? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Did we ever like, we never thought about that in a million years. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and, you know, here we are and like, Shout out to my 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 brother um, Aunt G from Smoke Session, Smoke and, Session Four Twenty, and, and, and Pack Bros because man, he gave me the vision because I always wanted to do it. I've been telling him for years, man. I, I like to do a strain one day. I like to do a strain, and I'm, I forgot where I got the idea from. I guess in the beginning, God started naming shit after him, and I'm like, I you know, I thought it was just only he's, be he's so mad. He's be like, why the fuck we ain't got a strain? Everybody else got a strain. We 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 need to have a strain. I was in my feelings. We about need it. to have a strain. <laughs> my brother was mad because I felt like we were like pioneers and and, and shit like that. And he's right. And, he's right. Yeah. And um, man, Ant got at me one day when, when Ant got on with Pack Bros and they had a, a, you know, they pretty much got all their stuff legal in order and got you know, you know. What's, what's that called? Legal distribution or whatever we got? Distribution license? Yeah, yeah. distribution license and all that. So when, when all that popped off and my boy started off with his cannoli and I just pretty much, the cannoli was so fire. I'm like, man, I just got your back. Let's, let's, let's push this cannoli. And to the we point did a song where about it. We did a song. We hooked up with the mechanics and our boy got in up in Sacramento and uh, we did a song and, um, and pushed it. And the next thing, Ant brought an idea to me. He said, hey, man, your 30th anniversary coming out. Let's let's do a mini clouds because we had a strange total devastation that was kind of pushing black market a little bit. But he said, you know, let's make it official and put it in the stores and let's make a mini clouds. And hey, here you go. There and you there have it, it ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, shout out the mini clouds later, to smoke. Man. Yeah. Get that at Golden hey. Gate Cannabis Company. Yeah, you can buy that at yeah, Golden Gate Golden Cannabis. Gates Cannabis Company, 500 Jones Street. Yeah, there you go. That's what's up. Go hey, get it. Shout out my brother for doing that too because like I said earlier, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be here right now. We wouldn't be still doing music. We would be, they do all that weed. Him and Anthony up in, in Sacramento, they get down. I'm out in Vegas. I live in Vegas. I don't have any part of it. I just get weed sometimes when I come and visit. You don't have no part of it. They just give me a lot of weed. I'm a part of it. But yeah, I I just want to make that clear. I want to shout out my brothers for all the hard work they're doing because not only are they putting the the weed strains together and the cannabis and they're keeping the Total Devastation name going, but also Tone putting all the music together, you know, reaching out to the mechanics, reaching out to uh, the Prozacs, Prozacs, reaching out to TC, reaching out to uh, Cosmo, reaching out to all these dope Be producers. Be, I'll be the, oh man, shout out Be The Wita and uh, that fragrance. Hit but a yeah, slam. Yeah, all these tones connecting with all these That's artists. And all I got to do now is is get my ass on some tracks and, and you know, put some verses on and be part of the album. Goldie, I'm, so I'm so looking for you, got, Goldie. Yeah, so that we can get it done. <laughs> Uh, and and I mean we got we got a hot single coming at the beginning of the year uh, uh, with with Burner and Bash, 
And then uh, uh, we got another one like he was just saying with with uh, uh, Hit a Slim and uh, Jay Simp doing the videos. So the videos are dope. Shout, shout out, out Jay Simp. Yes. Hey, hey, and them gemstones. God damn, I got so high off them gemstones. Yeah. If you ain't smoked them gemstones yet, boy, <laughs> shout out Jay Simp and them gemstones. Go do your research. Check that shit out. Fire. Well, that's what's up. I mean, yeah, I was I was gonna ask y'all what's coming on coming up next, but I think he just broke it down. I did uh, that. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, the video shoot. Uh, you just finished for many clouds of smoke part two. Yep. Can I talk about what happened at, at the video oh, shoot? Yeah, what happened? Yeah, yeah. What happened? Uh, I, I don't remember though. You gotta help. You gotta help. Oh, me. Tell me. I mean, just, right. just, just, just oh, on man. some Frisco shit. This crowd pulled up to these boys on Hay Street. Man, why Bernie Carter get bit? Man, broad daylight. Man. Man. Right, right there. I'm standing out there shooting the video. They like, damn, Bernie Carter. Huh? They took off running big though. Windows. They had to break every we're, fucking we're window victim, though. Victims I mean, of the break dip. one fucking window, bro. You don't break every fucking window to get in my shit. God damn. Man, whoever's they, out there, they serious about they bipping out here. Yeah, fucked up. You bipped some real ones, man. Yeah, man. Come but on, yeah. man. Hey, you almost got caught. You almost got caught. Yeah, the yeah, hogs chasing yeah, yeah, after yeah, him. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. shit. I was just he standing there. You. I just uh, seen Bernie like they're bringing in my car. <laughs> I just seen a strike. Like, oh hey, shit, he's just, the fuck? He just seen his jet out there. That was like, oh, y'all about that life, huh? <laughs> that shit was crazy, man. Um, shit happens. We in Frisco. Happens, you already bro. know. It's Frisco. You already know. Look, total motherfucking devastation, man. Thirty years later, history of the Bay podcast. Bernie Red Eyes, Big Tone Smoke. We just did this shit, man. Salute to you, brothers. Man, I'm happy to be. I'm hey, happy I'm, we I'm finally got here. I'm, through, I'm happy we finally hey, got thing, to be part of the hey, history of the Bay. I, I want to say, I wanna yeah. say one thing. Cool thing about it, man. Shout out to my guy Armani, man. Right yeah. on for the right on for the drip. He got that nice coffee. He got that coffee wine coming too. Hey, right, thank That's you, Drake. Yes, thank love. you for having us. Cool thing guy. about it's it. All yeah. love, hey, you gonna see him his mug in the video too. He made sure to get out there and be part of it. Yeah, that's right. Matter of fact. Can we, can we tell him what we're what we working on? Yeah, work yeah, on? yeah. Why I'm not? working why on getting the bar. Why I have why a why few not? drinks with my cutty. We're working on the bar. We're coming right now. Hey, we gotta, right we down gotta, the way. We still in the hood. We're working on doing a documentary. We're going we to do the original yes. Kings of yeah, Smoke. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, we're yeah, working yeah. on doing working. a documentary. My brother, yeah, my brother yeah, working. Yeah. I like so that. We're going to do a documentary. We're going to let y'all know our story and the... And the characters and the cast. Hey, Drake, like the I appreciate. I appreciate the little piece you did for us too. It's the, love. The, it's yeah, love. Yeah, 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 when yeah, I seen that, that was, yeah. you re, you really did. I I I. I, I, you taught me some shit about Total Dog. <laughs> you, know, you did your research, That's dog. I was like, yeah, God yeah, damn, yeah. that was a good one. Right. Hey, I got to yeah. shout out my daughter that Joelle on that one. Yeah, yeah, my daughter yeah, yeah. Joelle. Out, my yeah. daughter yeah, exactly. made that one happen. Joelle made that yeah, happen. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, I, I saw that and I was like, damn, Tone, that kid was good. Who was that? Right on, like, that was Drake. That was yeah. I said, That's yeah. the one I'm like, that's yeah. the kid. Yeah. I think we. And shout out to all my kids too and all my baby mamas. Don't let them forget about that. I love you, Bernie, Manuel, Alex, Angel. I love you, uh, Aviana and Jonathan, and all you baby mamas. I love you too. <laughs> I ain't shouting on my baby mamas. What's up, son? What's up, Makai? <laughs> Look, this is what this platform is for. This is the shit that you're only going to get here because it's real Frisco shit. It's real yeah. base shit. And we real really Frisco. tapped in and we really connected and we really pay respect to this all legendary status, shit. Gang, gang. And we don't Black just talk brown. about history. Hey, we make history. Shout out Frisco's finest. Shout out Dying Breed. Yeah. Shout Go out. Go Toes. Yep. Burners on Hate. Much Smoke love. some weed. Uh, we Tom, Tom Love. All that. We yeah. out of here, y'all. Everybody, Frisco, the city. Total devastation, history of the Bay. Yee, yee. Peace. Yee.